thought you might like this one, so I will share it with you. This is an old oil field or oil called arc welder. You can pick these up right for about 10, 20 quid, which is nothing. And out of that, take that apart, and I'm going to show you how to make a monster power supply, which will fry up anything. So let's get the thing apart and have a look. Right, well this is a fairly typical Oxford oil called welder. First thing I want to do um, is take the two screws out, tip it up and drain all the oil out and dispose of that carefully, obviously wearing gloves. So I'm going to lift the top off, now we can see all the goodies inside it. Right, now we've got the top off, we can see exactly what's going on. These are really easy, there should be no problems with this at all. This is our primary, right? So we've got 0, 200, 220 and 240. Yeah? That's quite straightforward. So we only need two of them. And that's the primary. This is the interesting bit, the secondary. A little bit, uh, maybe confusing this, but it's quite straightforward. This, this is a 50 volt winding and there's an 80 volt. And round the back, there's a big fat common. Right, quick shot of around the other side. There's uh, a set of windings here which develops 250 amps at fuck all volts. That's alright for a bit of spot welding or something like that. Fair old bit of current there. This little bit here, that's our choke, so it just controls the amount of amps. If I come around this other side, and there we are, we've got all those different taps off of this choke. So, uh, the further on the winding it is, the finer the gauge and less current. When it's right round on that position there, it doesn't even go through this ballast, it's straight off the transformer. And there it is. This gives you the different outputs. Obviously up this end, that's quite low current. Right up there, high current. It's quite handy, but messy. After that, you could just top that. Um, I'm quite pleased about this because the transformer, as you'll see in a minute, doesn't even complain. And that's what we like. So we don't just want to take things apart, we want to see them wired up, flat out. Let's do it. Right, well this is the transformer under short circuit conditions. And as you can see, no complaints. This is stone cold. And so is this. It's not like a microwave oven transformer, is it? designed to be shorted out all day long this thing. Um, the good thing is I've got this going through the variac so I can adjust the output. So all I've got to do on that is put a nice big fat rectifier on there, use it via the variac and then I can add 0 to 12 volts a couple of hundred amps which is very good for automotive stuff. Um, but anyway let's crack on and do a bit more shall we? Right so now you can see I've shorted out the 50 volt windings and I'm using it from a variac. Now the good bit is now I'm not going to burn the variac out but I can still call up 100 amps and control it because the variac's just controlling the primary, the 240 side. So if I start cranking this dial up a bit that axle blade gets hotter Oh, what fun we can have now. Oh, my gosh, let's keep it teetering on the edge. What do you reckon? It's just about to go then, wasn't it? See? I've turned it down a bit. Now I'll turn it up. So that'll make a very nice battery charger. Put a rectifier on that. Turn the old variac. Any voltage you want. Well, within reason. Just pop that, shall we? Ah, oh, is that it? Well, I uh, couldn't resist putting a great big spring across there. And once again, it's almost at short circuit conditions. And the transformer is still not complaining. This stone cold under short circuit. So this is too easy. One of these. One of these, 
controllable output. See, if I want to turn it down a bit, I'll just turn the old dial. See? Uh, you know you want me to pop that screen. The variac at the moment is naught. So let's turn it up. See, if I plug that straight in, it'll just be all over the place, but with a variac you can sort of control it. So I've just turned that down in time, just to keep that sort of ticking over. So it does help. I'm just going to crank that variac until that splatters all over the carpet now. Variac flat out. Yeah, soon pop that. What a wonderful power supply. Ten quid. A quick recap, right? Leave the primary alone. Do what you want with this. Unwind it a little bit to get the voltage down if it's too high at 50 or 80 volts. Or take it off totally and start again. And you can either have a step up by overwinding it thousands of tons of pine wire or have more current with wrapping a bit of bus bar around it. And you ain't going to burn that transformer out. That's what it's for. Uh, or just stick it on the variac. Turn the variac and you'll have a controlled output. Put a rectifier on it. Do anything you want with these. And they're cheap as chips. Hope you enjoyed that tip. Catch you later. There's your inverter welder. There's no transformer in it. And you could literally pick that up with your little finger. And it is all DC. It's very nice to use actually. Let's whip that casing off and we'll have a look inside. Right, there's the inside of the inverter welder. You can see now why that's fairly light. It's all electronic. I assume that that's a bank of uh, SCRs in parallel, although I'm not really bothered what the fuck they are. I'm only doing this to justify the crazy experiment at the end of the video. So anyway, there's the inside of the welder. I'll turn it around and have a look at the other side. There's a shot of the other side. Quick blast at the top. I must admit, if you get a fault in there, it's going to be a joke, isn't it? If one of them SCRs go, I should think they'll all go. And these things are about £600 each. But anyway, that's the two types of welder. Well, that's the two types of welder we looked at. That justifies the crazy experiment which I feel the need to do. I want flames! So, boys and girls, don't try this at home. I'll say bye now, and I'll catch you later, and I'll leave you with this clip. Let's see how good my welding skills really are. Surely we wouldn't want to blow a hole in it, would we, eh? Never make the world a winner. I think I'll stick to my electrics, eh?